Welcome back to Daily Devotions from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andrew Powell. It's a joy to be here with you uh, this day uh, as we, again this week, uh, go and walk through a few chapters of the book of Exodus. Uh, on Sunday mornings, I've uh, been teaching this book uh, to, to adults, and uh, you know, normally it probably uh, should take us quite some time to go through the book. We've been do, averaging around uh, three to five chapters a week. Um, so it's so there's so much in uh, these uh, these 40 chapters. Uh, it's so detailed, um, and and obviously many of us have grown up uh, probably familiar with uh, Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments. Uh, I believe it's still annually showed uh, on national television. Uh, usually it's around Easter or uh, often Palm Sunday, if I remember right. Or, or to coincide with Easter and uh, the certainly the the Old Testament uh, obser observation of uh, uh, observance of uh, Passover, and obviously that's a, a big event uh, within the, the book of Exodus itself. But one of the scenes in the movie is uh, Charlton Heston uh, showing Moses uh, in the mud pit. Uh, stomping on that mud and, and uh, the, the Egyptian soldier uh, cracking the whip and making sure that uh, uh, he, he worked his labor. And, and obviously uh, we know how hard those people worked. Uh, for f over 400 years, uh, the, the Egyptians had forgotten who uh, Joseph uh, and his, his brothers, uh, the children of Jacob, Israel, um, the Israelites, they had long been forgotten, but God had not forgotten who they were. As frustrated as they are here in chapter 5, uh, due to Moses' request that Pharaoh uh, release uh, the Israelites so that they can go a three days journey into the wilderness so that they can praise and worship uh, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, certainly because of, of Her Pharaoh's hard heart, and, and, and he clearly said, uh, I do not know your God. I do not know your God, Yahweh. And, and really, the, this request to leave and, and worship God was, was almost an insult to Pharaoh. Because in their culture, I mean, obviously they had so many, their theology was they had a God for everything. Um, you know, God of fertility, God of the earth, God of the Nile. Um, but ultimately, uh, the, as we talked about uh, yesterday in chapter 4, as, as God asked Moses and Aaron to be God to the Israelites, to be the representatives to God, uh, in the same uh, way, uh, the, the Egyptians viewed the Pharaoh as God. And so he, he probably was found insult. Uh, I am this divine ruler. I have my judgment, and those Israelites are my property, and I will not let them go. And, and as a result of his anger, uh, he made gathering the materials for bricks, even, even or brick making more difficult by making them gather their own materials. And obviously the Israelites are, are frustrated, and they're even uh, angry with Moses and, and angry, angry with God. Um, you know, I think we too can find ourselves in those shoes. Maybe we can be lamenting, uh, be frustrated at what our situation is, wondering, God, where are you in all of this? You know, I think we see this in, in disasters. Uh, I, th I think we see this in national, tra national uh, tragedy. I think we, we see this maybe even when we watch uh, the news or, or get on social media. Uh, where is God in all of this? And obviously, the book of Exodus, um, it, you know, God is is doing a very powerful thing. He he's going to demonstrate who he is in the midst of their turmoil, in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their suffering. He will show not only the Israelites but also the whole world through the Egyptians that God Yahweh, the Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is actively hearing the cries of His people. And that's not to be uh, taken lightly. But I do want to read a, a few verses here. Um, this is what they, they said after the brick-making task was, was rather difficult. And they said to them, 
The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us a stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O Lord, why you have done evil to the people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. Even Moses forgot that burning bush encounter where God had called him to lead uh, the people Israel out of Egypt. And uh, ultimately, God, uh, Moses forgot what God had promised, that he was going to give him signs and opportunities to show that the God of Jacob, uh, Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob is with them, that he has heard their groanings, he has heard their cries. And I, I even think that's our reminder too. Maybe we're we're in a season where we're angry uh, at someone, either in the church or God himself. I remember a seminary professor told me one time, um, you can tell people uh, that they can be angry with God because God is, is bigger than us. God is God and we are not. You know, so maybe you've had, had guilt over being angry with God. Uh, you know, ultimately, uh, God's uh, anger with us is, is, is never ending because of our sinfulness. And obviously, we can look at our circumstance and we can, we can point this or we can point that. But then we have to also look at the life of Jesus. Look at his suffering life. He, what he suffered all the way to the cross. Yes, there were times where he was praised and honored and, and glorified and acknowledged and encouraged. But there was also great times where he was abandoned, left, ridiculed, beaten, tried unfairly put on a justice system that was trying to convict a, a holy man, a holy God, fully God, fully man. Uh, the only thing convicting him is, is that he was fully uh, doing his father's will. And even as we look at our own pain and suffering and maybe asking the question, where are we? Where are you, God, in our circumstance? And the, and the promise is he's right here. He hears you. He knows what you're walking with. He knows that he sent his son into this sinful world to lay down his life for your pain, for your suffering. And you know what? The beautiful thing is Jesus didn't stay on the cross. Yes, they laid him in the tomb for three days, but he on the third day rose again. And because of that, that uh, security of the Easter promise is our justification that even in the midst of, of our suffering, our tragedy, our challenge, our trial is also uh, short-lived and our joy in the Lord is set before us through Jesus Christ. And that'll be the beautiful promise as we talk about chapter six tomorrow, as we will look to hear God's response. God speaks and we respond. God acts and we live out lives of service to him. We join me in a word of prayer today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word today in, in Exodus chapter five. You know, it's so relatable where we can find a difficult time or season of our life. Maybe it's bad news over a bad health diagnosis. Maybe it's a, a challenge at work. But Lord, we know that uh, you hear the cries of your people. You promise to listen to us and you promise, according to your good and gracious will, to answer according to that. And ultimately, we know it is answered and found through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. I pray that you bless us this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord Jesus.